Yo, and welcome to Shooting the Soil. In this video, we're going to talk compost, specifically an aerobic method of composting utilizing a Johnson Sioux bioreactor. This compost method requires very little maintenance. You don't have to monitor it if you don't want to. You don't have to turn it. And most importantly, it does not smell bad. So you won't upset your neighbors and you could do this method just about anywhere. So if done right, this compost will only smell like a forest and there'll be no bad smells. Ah, every time reminds me of camping. You know when you first wake up in the morning and you crawl out of your tent, there's still all dew on the ground? Yeah, that's the smell. You got it. Anyway, thanks to David Johnson's research, we know that a compost pile, air can only penetrate one foot in to any given pile. So all we need to do to create a Johnson Sioux bioreactor is add pipes like this so no part of the pile is ever one foot from air. And these tubes is what keeps it aerobic as opposed to anaerobic being in an environment which is lacking oxygen. Why is this important? Because it's the anaerobic organisms that are the ones that smell bad. They create all those putrid, horrible smells. So as long as we keep it aerobic and keep aerobic organisms in our pile, it will smell great and like a forest. Now the only downside is, is time. This method takes about one year for the pile to fully mature and be prime for your garden. But I feel the pros with the no smell and the little work greatly outweigh the fact that it takes a bit longer. As long as you put in the right ingredients and keep it wet, you can't really go wrong. So first we're gonna give a few tips. Then we're gonna go over how I built by Johnson Sioux bioreactor and then we're gonna go over what sort of materials we want to put in to a Johnson Sioux bioreactor and finally I'm gonna climb in there grab a sample and we'll check it out under the microscope all right so my first tip starts with the kitchen and what you put your uh, kitchen waste in now I made the mistake of trying to seal the smell away in an airtight ca container. But of course, I was just creating an anaerobic environment in my kitchen, which just added to the smell. And I was shooting myself in the foot, essentially. So, what you wanna get is something like this with a carbon filter, has air holes in the top. And that way, even when it's in your kitchen, it will stay aerobic. You still gotta empty it pretty often or it will start to smell, but it takes way longer for it to start to smell. You don't have to empty your, your bin every single day. You can, you can wait a couple of days. All right, so if you do wanna make your own bin like this, you can very easily do so just by drilling a couple holes in whatever container and you can buy carbon filter this is the little gold nugget right here. You can buy carbon filter on Amazon in like the size of an entire bed sheet for like $15. All you gotta do is search for a cut to fit carbon filter on Amazon. Check it out. It'll save you a lot of money. So my only other tip is just to keep this pile slightly damp. You don't want it soaking wet, but you just want enough moisture in there to keep the micro the microbes active and functioning. And now here's how I made my version of a Johnson Sioux bioreactor. After watching a whole bunch of videos on how to make your own that really helped, here's what I came up with. I knew I wanted some drainage and some airflow at the bottom of the pile. I didn't have a pallet, but I did have this piece of PVC. I drilled some holes in the sides of the pipe, covered it with quarter inch fencing. I then covered up the pipe making sure it stayed at a slight down angle so water could drain out. To hold the center air tube in place, I cut this hole in the wire fencing. Turns out it supports it really well, and the air can now circulate throughout the pile. 
And that's it. It's ready to go. Just put the bin down with the tube in the center and start filling her up. Okay, and now here's a quick breakdown of what I put in my pile. Um, this is what works for me on my property. So we got leaves and hay at the top here in the browns. Save those leaves. Throw a little bit on every time you throw in a little bit else. Um, when it comes to hay, make sure you source your hay. You don't want any hay with any pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. There's even some organic fungicides out there that will actually do detriment to the biology in your pile. So you want, if you can't get it from your property, you want to source your hay very well with hay. And as far as leaves go, uh, the best would be leaf mold, old leaves. So make a pile next to the compost bin, let them get old, throw them in as you go. All right, so moving on to the greens, also got plenty of these on the property. So with the grass trimmings, just like your lawn, you don't want any big clumps. You want to uh, break it up and mix it in with everything else. All right, next up, weeds, or more specifically, any plant on the property that you need to cut back. Um, three that I like to mention here are nettle, alfalfa, and bamboo, because they're all rich in micronutrients, specifically silica, which is really good for your plants. All right, and now on to wood. Old wood is the best because it's already somewhat bro broken down because wood does take a while to break down in your pile. Small sticks are good because they don't take as long to break down. And if you get wood chips, the older the wood chips or the smaller the wood chips, the better. Now if you can leave some dead wood or logs laying around your property, I would highly recommend it. It's a big part of nature's system and when they get all nice and crumbly, they're real easy to grab a little bit and throw it right into your pile. And now into the kitchen. So I don't put any meat products or oils into my pile because they just attract animals and lead to bad smells. Um, so basically it's all plant waste. I do also like to put in eggshells. I wash out the eggshells, get all the yolk out of them because you don't want any of that in there. But the shells themselves are a great source of calcium and coffee grinds as well. And now for one more tip before we look at my compost under the microscope. Here we have a mesh bag full of compost and we are doing a compost extract. Not to be confused with the tea, we're just extracting the microorganisms and the nutrients from the compost and we're not trying to multiply our microorganisms by adding food or molasses or something like that and brewing it over a long period of time. I just let mine sit in this homemade bubbler for about an hour or so and it's good to go. But probably putting it in a bucket and stirring it would work just as well. And once you're done extracting, you can recycle the compost in those bags by simply dumping it right back onto your compost pile. And through this method, if you purchase a really nice biocomplete compost or something like that, um, you can inoculate not just your garden, but also your compost pile. And finally, here is my compost under the microscope. We're in at 400x here. Here's a little fungi strand here. We see a lot of good bacteria floating around, but still a decent amount of clear stuff. We need to, to get that more, uh, more aggregated and broken down, but it's only been a half year since I started this new pile. Not really sure what that strand is there. Almost looks like something living, but I'm willing to bet it's just plant matter. And we'll just do a short little scan around here. Surprised that I didn't find any microorganisms besides the bacteria on this slide. Was hoping to see at least a nematode or something, but it is only a half a year into the pile and it does take one year, they say, to be fully complete. Here's a really long fungi strand and I think it would be a pretty young one, judging by its light color. Yeah, we are out at 100x now, not in at 400x like we were looking at that last fungi strand. So this one is much bigger than the other. And now for a new type of microscopy that I've just been getting into, dark field. This is the same fungi strand that we were just looking at before. And with the lighting just hitting it from the sides, 
you get some really cool colors and neon effects that glow in the fungi strands. It's really neat. It's kind of funny how similar it looks to space down there, especially with all the twinkles of the bacteria moving around, catching the light differently. All right, and that about wraps things up here. We'll leave you with a focal stack I took of the same fungal strand, which is eight images all at different focal lengths stacked on top of each other, so everything's in focus. So don't forget to hit those buttons if you would be so kind. That is, if you enjoyed the content and excited for more. We got some, uh, some big things to check out under the microscope soon here. We're going to get some fish brew and another biocomplete compost. So we're excited for those. So until the next video, uh, definitely check out shootingthesoil.com and we will catch you on the next one.